In-car safety technology saves lives. It's as simple as that. Autonomous emergency braking, or AEB, can turn crashes into close calls. Research shows it reduces the risk and severity of crashes by recognising the dangers and braking for you. <laughs> Before you even have time to process and react. So, how does it work? Well, that depends on which car you're driving. Each manufacturer has a slightly different system and they all have different names. AEB uses scanners, radars, lasers or cameras to screen for potential crashes and intervene if you don't respond. Some systems include flashing lights and audible forward collision warnings, as well as varying levels of braking intervention. We're going to show you how AEB works, but first to help explain the systems, this is Sam Collins from the TAC. Now Sam, there are essentially three types of systems. Give us a basic explanation of each. So AEB can actually be loosely classified into three different categories. You've got your low speed category, which is really designed for city environments. You've got a higher speed category, which is really around residential, interurban and arterial roads. And then you've got a pedestrian system, which is designed to specifically detect the characteristics of pedestrians and other vulnerable road users. So when we're looking for a new car, why is it so important that we consider cars with this technology? So this technology can prevent a crash from happening in the first place, or at least reduce the impact severity. Research from around the world is showing that this technology can have potential to reduce road trauma, so really important to look for this technology next time you're looking for a new car. It does have its limitations though, what do we need to keep in mind? The car's not going to drive itself, it's important for the driver to stay vigilant and to keep their eyes on the road. This technology is really about assistance, it's there to back you up in those emergency and unexpected situations. Volvo, Mercedes and Subaru have all offered up cars for us to test this technology out at the Broadford Road Circuit. To get these systems to kick in, we need to simulate a potential crash scenario. This is David Pickett from Volvo. He's going to help demonstrate pedestrian detection and city safety in a safe and controlled environment. Now, David, if a pedestrian walks out of nowhere, what happens then? Two systems will start working. One is a long range radar and the other is a camera. The camera will actually detect that it's a person and identify that it is someone as opposed to an object. The radar will give us a distance from that person. And then we'll make sure and track that if that person's actually going to step in front of the car or just walk alongside. If the person steps in front, the car will automatically brake. We'll give you a warning beforehand. If you don't react, the brakes will be applied. Okay, so what about the city safety? What speeds does that work at and how does it kick in? City safety will work up to 50 kilometres an hour. From 50 to 30, it'll actually mitigate or reduce the severity of the accident. From 15 to 30, depending on the road conditions, it'll pull you up and stop hitting the car in front. Bertie, the blow-up car, is here to help us demonstrate the city safety system. Let's go. So what we'll do now is we'll actually come up towards the car at about 30 kilometres an hour, a bit less. I'm actually distracted now because I'm talking to you. Ah, I can hear it. <laughs> and the car stops. And that's probably a good real world example. You're distracted, the car in front stopped. A few car seconds stopped. is all it takes and next thing, here we are. The system works by intervention. So if you don't react to the warnings, then the car will actually intervene and brake for you. Subaru offers similar functionality with its EyeSight system. If you take a look at the Forester, you'll see two cameras mounted high on the windscreen. These constantly scan the external environment looking for potential hazards. If it spots a problem, it's also capable of bringing the car to a complete stop at city speeds. Heading out of the city, there are other features that come under the AEB umbrella that can help. Well, to demonstrate that, we've enlisted the help of the Mercedes-Benz Driving Academy. This is Chief Instructor Peter Hackett. Tell me what is it capable of and how does it work? You activate two radars which are located behind the Mercedes-Benz star and the grille. And the car asks you how fast would you like to travel, that's cruise control. But the extension now is you can, the car will ask you how far would you like to travel from the traffic in front. And you twist a, a little dial on the cruise control lever and you extend a, a virtual bumper bar from the front of the car. So you travel at your speed or the pre-selected distance from the car in front. All right, show us how it's done. Let's go. So if we set the cruise control to 100 kilometers per hour, you'll notice a graphic comes up on the dashboard and there's a, a line which indicates the virtual bumper bar, if you like, to the front of the car. And we can twist this dial here to increase and decrease the distance. If a car pulls out, then you slow down and it relies on the distance. And if the car in front slows down as well, then our car will slow down to maintain the gap that I've already requested. Now, if we were to pull alongside, say we're in a second lane, and we decide that we need to go back into this lane, the car will apply the brakes. A bit quicker that time, yeah. 
It's important to note that AEB cannot be retrofitted to an older car. Sam, for those looking for a new car, what are the steps you'd recommend that they take? I'd highly recommend that they check out howsafesyourcar.com.au. You get a heap of information about safety ratings and safety features. And as you've seen today, how important AEB is, you can get a heap of information about the technology and which cars have AEB. Well, that's some really good advice and there are loads of options available. Today, we've tested out the systems from Volvo, Mercedes and Subaru, but there are similar systems from more than 15 manufacturers, whether you're after a city car, a sports car, an SUV or even a people mover. When it comes to technology that can reduce your risk of injury or even save your life, it's worth paying that little bit more for. So keep that in mind when you're shopping around for your new car.